Hello, all, and welcome back to hmm, High Priest. <laughs> Oops, wrong intro. Welcome back to First Impressions. I'm High Priest, and this is my uh, well, first impression of Ant Man and the Wasp. And man, am I happy! I'm finally caught up with the MCU. So by the time this goes out, it, it uh, I'll probably be behind one more movie, technically. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> kind of Marvel hasn't come out yet, but oh, feels good to finally be caught up. But uh, yeah, so I'll just go over the basics. Uh. Uh, like I always do before I get into spoiler territory. First, really like the movie. I'm not sure if I'd say it was worse or better than the original. I, I don't think it was this as I don't think it was as good. But I'm also not sure if that means I think it was worse or better. <laughs> I'm wibbly wobbling on it. I forgot to pour myself a drink. But, yeah. So, it's not a bad movie, and I really enjoyed the previous one, so you know this one works. Even if I do think there are questionable, one or two questionable decisions. I think they pull those questionable decisions off, but... They are there. Right, so... Uh, what I liked were, first of all, I just like from the first movie, I love the use of the pin particles throughout the movie. They do clever stuff. Like, it's not really a spoiler. One of the things they do is they have this Hot Wheels case of the Hot Wheel cars, except they're not Hot Wheel cars. They're regular cars that they've disguised Hot Wheels because pin particles can be used to grow and shrink everything. Like, they're not hard up for funds, because honestly, it really wouldn't be that hard to get funds if you had pin particle shrinking tech. For instance, you could get buy a gold, a single gold piece of gold. A gold bar would be fairly efficient, because then you'd only need to buy it once. Break, break it up. And then grow each piece into a bigger piece of gold. Voila! Food? Oh hey, that apple's now twice the size of what it what is before. That'll feed me for a whole meal. Or even you shrink down and eat it that way. It's entirely possible... Yeah. To use it in so many clever ways, and this movie does it greatly. The other movie did it too, but I love the, the little uses of it for, in so many clever ways. Pretty, I like how it addresses one of the things I, uh... had questions, like... Where was uh, Ant-Man in uh, Avengers? Because he wasn't in the movie. That's um, I don't consider that really spoiler card. This movie does a good job of answering that. Also re revealing some misconceptions I had about the previous one. Ones that make perfect sense. And, uh, hmm. Four. What, what would be four? Uh... Oh, I know. Uh, I like, and I, admittedly, it's mostly a thing with the previous one, but I think this it goes repeating for this one, because this movie helps me appreciate it even more. I like how well, I, I like the, the fact that it went with old Hank Pym. 
Because, as I said in my review of Ant-Man, th there's a lot of baggage with Hank Pym. With this, they still all have the ability to explore the character and such. But, they don't, because he's not the pro protagonist, they don't have to, you know deal with the baggage that you normally get with Hank Pym. The baggage I'm referring to is the the classic well-known scene where he slaps his wife. Which, one thing to note, apparently wasn't even as bad at, when it was being written as it was when it was on page. Because if Alright, apparently, when it was written, it was meant to be an accidental hit. Like, not like he lost control and hit her. No, more like he moved his arm the wrong way and smacked her. <laughs> like, you know, sometimes it happens when, say, people are playing this thing and not careful of the people around them. Like, pfft. oh, sorry. But the artist apparently had an idea had ideas about what it should have looked like. And that permanently poisoned the character. But they can avoid that here. And of course I just generally love the characters in these these movies. In a lot of the details, such. Uh, right, things that I did like. Well, uh, let's see. Uh, well, there's one firm thing I can say I, I didn't like. I thought the movie pulled it off well enough, and I don't think it's too much of a spoiler because it's predictable as fuck. And I don't mean, like, normal critics saying, oh, everything is predictable. I mean, like, you've seen it a billion times in, a du in other movies. Or, I should say, other sequels. The re-romance. I'll go more into it as I call it, but it, the re-romance, a.k.a. what happens when you have people who got together in the last movie... Broke off off screen, and now they have to get back together. Now they get back together over again. And it's like, why, why, why waste time doing that when you can keep them together? And I still have the opinion that it would have been better off had they not had to do it, but I mean, it's at least better done than l literally every version of the scene to ever exist before this. Eh, anything else I don't like. Well, remember, this is first impression, so I'm not... So I might go to find something I didn't like later, but... No. Which, I mean, means it's gonna be time for... Spoiler territory soon. Uh, but one thing. I'm, I'm addressing some, uh... What... what one or two things from the previous movies. The first is, or my previous reviews of the movies. First is, so I found out that, uh, that I had some miss, uh, I, actually, you know, I think I'll save that for a spoiler moment. So I'll go with the other one. I made a crack in the last movie about, uh, in Avengers Infinity War about Mary Sue Wakanda. And I feel like I should clarify because I, I there, as I said in the Black Panther movie, I don't actually have that much of a problem with movie Wakanda. Despite my little rant in the previous movie. I don't actually don't really mind movie uh, Wakanda all that much. The problem is, much like how I talked about Scott, Hank Pym has uh, lots of baggage. Well, so does uh, Wakanda, because in the comics they are massive Mary Sue's, and that's occasionally bubbles up 
from frustration with that to miss aim frustration at that. Right, okay. Now. Spoiler time. I do that so I ha can save myself time tracking it down. Right, first thing. So, if you didn't know, apparently the Captain Marvel movie was taking place in the 90s. I didn't know that. I, I was going to address that earlier, but it was something that uh, I found out. I'm like, oh, okay, I thought it might have taken place at, in between the Infinity Wars. Like, but, no, that makes more sense. I, I didn't realize that Infinity War would almost be a direct follow-up. I mean, Infinity Wars, uh, Avengers 4 would be a direct follow-up to Infinity War. But, nope, it is. I mean, it isn't. It's actually a prequel to another prequel to everything else, which raises the question of where the fuck was she in literally all of this. But, you know, given what this movie did with Scott Lang explaining why he wasn't involved, I think they'll probably do a good job. Which, oh boy, this movie. Right, in the last movie, I was like, where the fuck is, is Ant-Man? It didn't hit me until after I did the review, actually, ironically. I didn't even realize he wasn't there, so I kind of feel bad about that. But after it was, I was like, wait, where was he? I wasn't in this. Wait, where was he? Well, now I find out. See, Ant-Man, and uh, it turns out that Cap didn't break out Ant-Man like I thought he did during, uh, Civil War. Which may- because- probably because Scott chose to stay behind, you know? They didn't show that because it would complicate the movie some, but it makes perfect sense. If he gets broken out, he can't be with his family. But if he stays, sells out Hank and Hope, then it probably- and, you know, the whole promising never to go near superhero stuff again. It means he's actually got a chance at, uh... You know, actually got a chance at, uh... Being with his family again. And it worked! This also ties into the re-romance. Because... You know... Being sold out it got, is a great way to... Kill a romance. <laughs> they eventually do forgive him, especially since it's his own god. It was his own goddamn fault. He went without telling them, got himself in trouble, and then had to sell them out just to stay with his family. And the worst part was, as it, as we all found out, it wasn't even. He wasn't really needed. Yeah, they proved Bucky innocent, but... The big thing is they thought that one guy was trying to do a big evil plan, but nope. Baron... The not-so-Baron Zemo was just, uh... Doing something else. He wasn't trying to do some things that would bring down a nation. Or any of that. So... His help really wasn't that necessary. So, yeah, no, they had a lot of reasons to be pissed at him. And, uh, yeah. I also like the, the, the heading back to the thing where they plan on rescuing Jeanette, and it... Yeah, I, I just love the fact they actually followed that up, and Jeanette was rescued in this movie. I was very happy. I do find it a little weird they searched for Spock it with, uh, I I've recently rewatched the uh, Trek movies. And it, they, they inserted a scene where he met Jenna and had a, essentially a mind meld. Where she used her new microverse powers to shove something into his head.
which is just weird. I, uh, but, uh, yeah. But they snuck that scene in, so when they turned on their machine to begin their rescue attempts, BAM! Five minutes later, he calls in because he had a dream about being her. With, with a message from her to them. So, yeah, he calls that in after spending a day with his daughter and an over top but very amusing plan. Because he's under house arrest. And his, uh, and they have this little, I, I thought they were having this plan where, this thing where they were inv investigating an anthill while shrunken up. But then I realized, no, wait, no, they're just having this, fa they're faking it. Which is just adorable and great. Like, Scott's a great dad. He, he really is. He, he, do he, he does the best to take care of his daughter and make her happy. Even when it's something as silly as a fake a heist. Uh, it, it was a very nice scene and had and was just generally a lot of fun. Honestly, those are some of the best moments in the, in these movies. Everything else is great, but uh, I, I'm a big sucker for family moments like that. Uh, but yeah, so. Meanwhile, Scott's buddy is uh, having problems with the business they set up. And, uh, it interrupts their little game to worry about it before, you know, things go back normal. Scott's daughter goes off, he gets, his place gets searched because he fucked up and got his ankle bracelet outside the yard while playing with his daughter. And, uh, he goes on with his day. He, he has a dream I told you about. He calls Hank and, uh, Hope. They kidnap him. And, base, and roughly interrogate them to find out information. They try to get one last part they need to complete their rescue device. But things go south. We meet a transparent ghost woman who can phase through things and stuff. And after... Uh, how do I... Uh, I'm not even sure how to put it. She inter interrupts what was supposed to be the sale before... Uh, the person they were buying the part from backstabbed them. Which, I'll give this guy points. He's a determined fucker. He was determined to get his hands on Hank Pym Lab. Even though I think he's kind of a massive idiot. For, you know, trying to, you know, sell what he didn't even steal yet. Like, there's a difference between having prospective buyers and having it already be sold. And he made that clear, he had it already sold. Moron. But yeah, he, uh, renegades on his deal. She comes back in the ant suit, manages to overcome the goons and steal it, but then gets her ass kicked by, uh, the ghost woman. Which causes Scott to put on his new suit, because he destroyed... Because he didn't really destroy the old suit, but he ma made everyone think he did. A new suit that doesn't work properly, but helped, but was still enough to help them fight. Unfortunately, just because they got the part and drove the ghost woman away didn't mean she was uh, capable of still doing stuff. Because she found Hank, shrubs her fist through his neck, and friend, the phase it back into reality if she didn't hand over his lab. After which, the editors find them and, you know, rush to find, try to figure out how to get recovered the lab. Because, you know, they actually did ha look put a tracking device and such in there, but they were doing with someone smart enough to disable it. We cut to her, and, uh, she takes off the suit. Is clearly phasing without much control over it until she gets into a room, into a glowing room. 
with a bed in it. So it clearly clears that uh, whatever's ha going on with her, she doesn't have much control of it. Oh, that's another thing I should have listed. The villains, right? Yeah. Outside of the free moron, uh, outside of the more the determined moron, uh, who there was also uh, Bill and Ava. I know I'm going out of sequence here. I do that more. Do that nowadays. Who are the villains? And now I was actually shocked that he was working with her, but once it, but after about like five seconds, it became fairly obvious that he pro they probably weren't the bad guys there. They were just desperate people trying to do something, considering her previous condition. And it was right. She's basically dying, and the only hope of saving her is draining is uh getting to to Jeanette and draining the quantum energy from her. And, uh, the good guys don't want it, because that could kill Jeanette, but, well, the thing is, it's really kind of Hank's fault anyways. Oh, he says it's not his fault. He says Bill was filling the girl's head with lies, but this Hank Pym has more of a comic book Hank Pym's nastier traits, so, yeah, no, he's kind of an asshole. So clearly he lacks the whole wife beating aspect that the comics love. So again, that was really only a thing in the Ultimate Timeline. Like I said, he accidentally hit his wife once and basically had to live with the universe never letting him for fucking forget it. <laughs> like, there is this even big comic book where he's basically gets really angry at, at Tony for trying to fucking use that against him, when Tony has had a lot bigger and more recent mistakes. Oh, sorry. Uh, side, sidetrack, sidetrack. Yeah. So it was fairly obvious Hank screwed them over. But yeah, I'm getting ahead of myself. So yeah, they figure... Now, uh, they can't track it. Eventually, they get desperate enough to go to someone who might be helpful. An old friend of Hank, who is, understandably, calling him out on his bullshit. Though he clearly seems to get along well with Scott. But, yeah. He helps them track it down, but, oops. Oh, while wearing piss-poor disguises... I mean, Scott was admittedly fairly slow at the uptake at certain points in this movie. Not completely out of character, but still. Not completely out of character, but still. But, uh, he was smart enough to realize that these outfits were fucking hor horrible disguises. They're literally just wearing baseball hats and sunglasses. And said, no one will recognize us. They got recognized. But, uh, yeah. Turns out, oops, he was leading them there because they need their help to get Jeanette back and save the girl. Like I said. But, yeah, they're... They're opposed. There's this funny scene where his daughter t keep, where uh, Scott's daughter keeps texting him with 911, and then she calls them. Only she can't find her soccer shoes. That's the emergency. He has to fo apologize to again the villains who were trying to do their big speech, and it got interrupted because. Uh, their, uh, couldn't find their shoes. Like. <laughs> uh. It, I mean, he did feel bad. He thought it w was, in fact, you know, an emergency, but no, no. Just something st dumb and silly. Uh. 
I was like, can I again say how much I like the fact that his ex's husband is uh, actually a great guy who seems to just like Scott a lot by this point. He was kind of a jerk at first, but but now he seems to the uh, Scott as a good friend, and that's not seen nearly enough in fiction. I realize. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, what was I saying? Right! Right, right, uh... So yeah, they, they get captured. They get monologued at. They es escape. Hank attempts to claim that, Oh, it's not my fault. He stole my blah 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 blah. Like, it's made pretty clear by the front of the movie that no, that girl father really did get fucked over by Hank and end up dead because of it and ended up fucking up her life. But yeah, they escape, re-steal the lab, begin work. And, uh, while that's going on, she gets desperate, so she thinks of, uh, kidnapping hit Scott's kid. Bill will have none of that. See, uh, I forgot to mention that Ava was raised by, uh, that, that Bill's, you know, Hank's old friend and that Ava was raised by S.H.I.E.L.D. slash, actually, Hydra to be a weapon. But when they let, but when S.H.I.E.L.D. collapsed, Bill took her in because, you know, he was a good guy who was honestly always trying to help her. In part way, oh, I forgot to mention also revealing that she's basically got maybe a few days, maybe a few weeks at max left to live. So, she is understandably 100% desperate. Meanwhile, because of, again, a fuck up on, uh, Scott's part, both Ghost and the FBI end up finding out where they are hiding while they were trying to do things. After they manage to turn the machine on again and through it, Jeanette manages to pos temporarily possess Scott and uh, have him up with her family and of course help them find her. And I'm like, man, it's gotta be weird for them. First time seeing your mom for years, and she's in your ex-boyfriend, who you still clearly love, spotty, or wor or worse, haven't seen your wife in years, and she's in your daughter's boyfriend's body. But yeah, it's a somewhat touching moment, even if it's a little weird. Uh, yeah. But after that, you know, Scott fucks up, and because of him, Ghost ends up finding out where to go, and the FBI. So he has to go and get back to his house. They have to pack up before the FBI get there, and he has to go and get back to his house, because while he's on board with helping them, because they are his friends and he cares about them and feels bad for what he did, he needs to get back before his... His, uh, shit is fucked up, and he loses his chance of being with his family. They are clearly beyond pissed at him for doing it again. But in fairness, they did kind of kidnap him with no warning. Like, he has legit reasons to, uh, that are as good as fight saving mom, meow. Why did it not fuck it up so that he can be there for, for his kid? And you can say it's not as bad because he'd be in prison, but we saw the prison he went into. He'd never see his daughter again. But his daughter pushes him to, you know, so he gets back there, and his daughter pushes him to go rescue them. Meanwhile, they get captured by the cops, and, uh, or not rescue, go help them. But it turns into rescue, because, again, they get captured by the FBI for not properly checking the perimeter before shrinking down the building. 
and Ghost manages to steal the lab again by killing the corrupt FBI agent that was sent to get it. Oh, I forgot to mention that part. Ghost and the FBI found out because he told Luis, who is, again, a great, a great sidekick style character. And then Louis told them when he got pumped full of truth tr 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 serum. That the guy doing it vehemently said, It's not true serum! It's not true serum! It's totally true serum, dude. Of course, he admits that at the end of the movie, but anyways. Right, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. He eventually ends up admitting, admitting to where they are, which Ghost was overhearing, and after that, the one, uh, crook who has been trying to get a hold of the lab for a good while, but calls the FBI because A, he knows the guy who can get it to him, and B, it'd be easier to get it from the FBI than it would be to get it from the, from Ghost, or Ava. So yeah. That happens. But, you know, the guys, once again, you managed to get out of danger via Scott sneaking in the suit and a disguise to get uh, Hank and Hope out. They drive off to, and begin a plan to, you know, hot, to use the setup already set up to go back, grab Jenna, and get out. Things don't go to plan, because while they do manage to trick, get Bill out of the building and trick Ava out and distract her long enough to shrink it, after sending, uh, Hank, it was originally Hope, but now it's Hank, through... Excuse me. They, uh, go on a long chase through the city, all three groups trying to keep a hold of the fucking thing. Which leads to a lot of funny scenes, uh, great action, and, uh, hot po basically playing hot potato between the building. Which, did I mention the building where... The lab, which is a big old building, shrunk down to a little backpack carrying case. Roll on, backpack on wheels, yeah. But, uh, yeah. So it keeps getting restolen either by the crook, by goat, the increasingly desperate ghost, uh, or by one of the good guys. Which, if it... Me, oh, I forgot to mention the part where, in order to track the place down, they had to re-steal the old suit, which Scott said he destroyed, but then he revealed he didn't, which had been hidden inside a trophy his daughter had given him, but then she decided to take it as show and tell, and... Yeah. Cause, anyways, suit's still malfunctioning, but either the suit to grow giant... Because he originally he tried to shrink down and fly on an ant to get the uh, building, which is now being held by the crook guy on a boat. Unfortunately, flying ants are great food to seagulls. And when he finally managed to get one to him, it's still in the short lived Antonio Banderas gets eaten. And he has to d jump off and, d and turn giant to swim over there. It's a great moment where it, he everybody thinks he's a whale on a because they're on a whale's tour. Only to surface and apologize for not being a whale. Pluck the building out of the guy's hands, and then make his way back to shore before passing out because the suit's messing up and because he's giant and he's now struggling for air. 
this leads to it eventually ending up in the hands of Ghost, who enlarges it. And of course, rather rudely, re rather broadly reveals to everyone that hey, Ant Man's active. So the FBI are rushing down to his house, begin rushing down to his house, and also on to location. The uh, crooks managed to finally be taken out, and er and uh, Ghost has set up the building to start draining from uh, Jeanette. And I should mention that uh, Bill actually backed out the last minute because he's got a conscience and he believes they'd be right. It would kill Jeanette and he can't be part of killing a person. Because again, he's not a bad guy. He's just here to help a little gir a girl who he's been trying to help since she was a little girl. Meanwhile... Hank uh, travels to the microverse, this kind of called the Quantum Void, in this story, and finally reunites with uh, Jeanette. He briefly goes insane, but Jeanette reveals her ability to uh, use quantum energy to heal people, to restore their sanity, to do a lot of tricks. She's got super, straight up superpowers now. The only thing she can't do is glow big because her suit's fried. And, uh, there was a brief fake out where it made, was made, where, uh, Hank thought he was seeing Ghost, but yeah, they finally have their reunion. They get in, only they can't leave, can't return to normal size because the machine they used to get that small safely still broke. I mean, it isn't broke, it's still tiny. So it needs to be regular size for them to return. So they only end up escaping right when uh, Ava sets the machine to uh, start draining Jack. Thankfully, they managed to unplug it and get it and stop it. But uh, they in fight while well, they finally escape the mansion, and they have a brief happy reunion and everything. And then Jeanette turns because she's just been informed about all this and goes to help Ava. I was predicting that the moment she had magic powers that she might be able to do that. It just transfers her energy directly because that's what like she was already doing. That, and, and it showed that Ava real, as after that, that Ava kind of really regrets what she trying to kill Jeanette to save her own life because it turns out just letting her save her would have done the same thing anyways. And, yeah. Because she's not a bad person, she just was forced to do a lot of bad things and is now desperate trying to save her life. Desperate on every level. She's not a bad guy. And Bill's definitely not. While the others end up, finally end up running away from the building after the happy reunion and saving her. And, and shrinking the lab down again to, you know, get it out of the city city. Bill Bill reunites with Ava and refuses to, you know, leave her behind like she wanted because she's still hurting a lot, but she's not dying. Because he cares about her and he's not gonna let her, you know, get hurt. That's why he helps her all the time. Even if she d did push him away so she could try to kill someone that he refused to... and. <clears throat> Even if he refused to try to help her while she was killing someone. Planning to kill someone. So yeah, they weren't the villains, they were just the op the antagonists. They were good people, and it was still all Hank's fault. Because he's a jackass. Scott managed to make it home, it's finally had the ankle bracelet off, and... Oh, I forgot to mention, of course, that the great, wonderful bits of music in this movie, Hello World. First song when he was, I believe, uh, in the early movie, and just living his life in the little house. And then again later, now that he's free to hang out with his daughter in the world. But yeah. 
uh, you get some great scenes. A Hank and uh, I not Hank. Hope and Scott and his daughter going to the drive-in. Only it's a, it's a little bitty drive-in where they get bothered by a moth. Hank and Jeanette put built building a house on a beach somewhere far away. And it, it's just a general happy ending. But we all know that wasn't gonna last! Ugh. I, I, I'll repeat what I said. It, it clearly explains why he wasn't involved in Infinity War. First, he had all this crap to do, so he wasn't even easily catchable by... Contactable by, you know, Cap and everyone. And two, as the mid credit scene shows, as the mid credit scene shows, <laughs> while on a mission to the micro, back to the quantum uh, void to collect more hearing stuff. To help Ghost. That takes place at exactly the moment, right before the moment, the snap happens. You would have heard a snap there, but I can't snap. Never been able to. I have no idea how. You know, out of my hands just don't work for that. I have that physical capability. Point is, right when the snap happens. So the other reason is because he was busy doing something and. Uh, when the snap occurs, he's still stuck in the microverse while everyone else he knows got vaporized. And I do mean everyone, as revealed by the uh, end credit scene. God, that was a tease. I I sat through so much, cr so many fucking names and shit for the end credit scene, and all I got was ash and dust where his family and friends would be. Everybody he knows is dead. Like, Jesus Christ. I was expecting something like that, but... I think it's actually worse that I didn't see anybody disintegrate. Just that, uh, guys? Guys, stop messing around! Get back and the ash flow... Floating to the ground, like... Jesus Christ! But, oh my god. Wow. Just... I mean, this does firmly answer why he wasn't involved in Infinity War, but it also show, answers why he'd be involved in the next one. Next uh, big Avengers conflict. Because they're kind of down on heroes, and they'll need all the help they can get, and he's probably going to want a lot of revenge for, you know, the murdering of everybody he knows and cares about. Like, holy shit, Scott Lang did not get off easy. A lot, of, it's supposed to be half the world, but apparently, he was going, his family, and everyone he knows and cares about is that part of that half. God damn. That's not even, that's not even even spread, that's just like, that's pure random, and he just got, and they all got the bad dice. Jesus Christ. I'm not criticizing the movie for that, that's part of a video where like, sh I mean, I was expecting it, but not that bad. Just... Wow! Suffice to say, I am hyped for Infinity War Part 2, or whatever it's going to be called, whenever it gets here. Which, it'll probably arrive late next or this year, depending on when you're watching. 
when whenever this get, actually gets posted. Given that, how long is it going to take for Captain Marvel to come out? <laughs> ah, and of course, there, the one thing I didn't mention. Stan Lee. And you can probably tell from my other reviews that... It hadn't happened yet when I record those. Look at that. I knew intellectually they wouldn't have skipped him for any of the movies, but I was because of how late his cameo was. I, a small part of me was like, "Oh God, are they not going to give him a? Did they not give him a cameo in this movie?" But no, I, I was very thankful because this is one of the last three he would have done. This, Captain kind of Marvel, and of course, Part Two: Infinity War. I don't know. Hey, that was. I, I. It feels weird living in a post Stanley world, especially watching the, the cameo. And it wasn't really one of it, anything special compared to a lot of his other ones. But considering what happened to him, it's. One of the more important now because it was one of his last. But yeah, moving aside from the sadness of that, this was a fantastic movie. I loved it. I had a lot of fun watching it. And oh, one thing I will restate: I said it during the last one. I thought, man, this, th these fight scenes made me wish there was a good, a, even a okay video game of this. Like, I can't wait to play the video game, that's why I said. And the same holds true for here. I don't even know if they make video games of the Marvel movies anymore. Did they stop doing that? Because I know they were getting bad reviews, so did they just stop? God, I hope not. I really, really, really like... I'm one of those people who actually really likes playing bad video game movie tie-ins. Specifically, my favorite kind of bad movie video game tie-in, good movie, bad video game tie-in, is the platformer. They're all fairly samey, but they're a lot of fun, and I would, but yeah, I would love to have a beat em up or any style video game of this, as long as it's based on the scenes in this movie, because, oh, I, I uh, but uh, yeah, I really like really helps with the video game, because if so, I'm definitely going to be streaming me playing at some point. Well, okay, maybe not this one, because, uh, I, I think that's a bit ahead console-wise for me, all things considered. That's not the newest console I have, but it's the second newest. Well, third, but the other one is around the same time. That... You get my point. I, I'm not uh, up to date with the current gen. So I wouldn't even be able to play it, given how new this movie is. Oh, you know what I really, really loved? The credits. I don't know if those were actual toys or just CGI toy, CGI mock-ups, but oh my god, that was... That look, looked really good, and I really liked it. <laughs> yeah. To clarify what I... I I said, you know, yeah, uh, I, I really didn't, I thought the re-romance in this movie worked, you know, because they gave good excuses, you know, he fucked up and kind of betrayed them, because he went off into something he really didn't need to, and so yeah, no, of course she dumped his ass, it's firmly 100% his fault. But the thing is, there was no real sign of that in Captain and Civil War, and uh, I just think that you know they didn't really need to break them up again just so they could get back together. 
I mean, it's better done in things like, say, Lost World, or National Treasure, or... Seriously, people. If you're going to break the fucking couples up, just do what Indiana Jones did, and replace... Bring in someone else to be the lover interest. It's dumb. No, no one wants to rewatch the same goddamn love story. At least this one wasn't as bad as like that because they at least gave it decent justification. But fucking Christ, I don't. For why these people who still obviously care about each other aren't with each other anymore. Or I should say, still care about each other romantically. So, it's better than most, but yeah, I just don't think it was really a necessary part of the plot. Still, I really enjoyed this movie. I really enjoyed a lot about this movie, and it was great fun. Now I'm hyped for Captain Marvel whenever that comes out. And even more hyped for Infinity War. Because, again, that fucking ending. <laughs> but, anyways, yeah, uh, this is High Priest sign. Now, I will see you all next time.